Welcome to another video in the series of technical videos by Tmoot 5G. This is Nithi, early stage researcher 9, team up 5G. In this video we will cover carrier aggregation as one of the promising technologies for 5G and beyond networks. Today, staying connected is more important than ever with desired. Speed and user experience are vital. We are living in the invention age. And the thrust for technology is limitless. We are witnessing massive transformation and development in industrial sectors, education system, healthcare, automotive industry, smart economy, smart lifestyles, and many more. In general carrier aggregation combines two or more carriers into one data channel to enhance the data capacity. It is possible to combine carriers in the same or different frequency bands. Carrier aggregation is creates new opportunities for carriers to make better use of their spectrum. Using frequency bands, together you can pass users from one to the other seamlessly and you can combine the two to deliver more capacity just where you need it. It is the way to boost the network capacity resulting in higher speeds. It combines two or more connections in the phone in such a way that they can be treated as one bigger connection. Carrier aggregation was introduced in 3GPP release 10 in 2011. It was incorporated in LTE Advance. It improves data rate for users within overlapped areas of the cells or cell boundaries. By aggregating multiple channels together a mobile network operator can increase the total available bandwidth of a single transmission and thereby increase the bitrate and capacity of the network. CA has also helped to utilize smaller spectrum allotments which only support smaller channel widths and also improves the coexistence with other radio access technologies. Carrier aggregation allows to aggregate several frequencies which may be contiguous or non-contiguous. It can be used for both FDD and TDD separately, as well as the combination of both technology. For TDD it was restricted initially to have all component carriers having the same downlink uplink allocations. But in release 11, this restriction was removed, and aggregation of multiple TDD carriers with different downlink uplink allocations is supported. Let's see how CA works. When there is no CA, data is transmitted using primary component carrier and the serving cell is called primary serving cell. In CA scenario, data is transmitted by aggregating one or more carriers with primary component carrier and the serving cell is called secondary serving cell to support wider bandwidth. In CA instead of providing the phone with just one connection, the tower actually connects the phone using two or more connections at the same time. The primary serving cell is selected by UE during cell search and it can never be deactivated or removed. It can be changed only at the time of handovers while secondary cells are added or removed as per the requirement. Primary cell handles all RRC and NAS procedures and manages UE mobility. While the secondary cells are configured as added. A maximum of 5 carriers can be aggregated that means there can be maximum of 4 secondary cells. And the maximum allotted bandwidth is 100 MHz. There are various ways in which CA carriers can be accommodated. First is, intra-band contiguous. In this scheme the primary component carrier and the secondary component carriers are contiguous and belong to same band. As spectrum allocation to operators is not always uniform. Therefore, it is not always possible to have this scheme. Next is, intra-band non-contiguous. In this scheme the primary component carrier and the secondary component carriers are allocated from same band but they are not contiguous. And the third one is, inter-band non-contiguous. In this scheme the primary component carrier and the secondary component carriers are allocated from two different frequency bands. This scheme allows number of possible band combinations. 3GPP has defined all the allowed band combinations for carrier aggregation. Now, let's talk about scheduling. Carrier aggregation introduces new messages in protocol layers which includes some RRC messages. To handle secondary component cell, there are two main scheduling alternatives. First is at MAC layer, which is same carrier scheduling where the resources are scheduled on the same carrier as the grant is received. Another is cross-carrier scheduling. Cross-scheduling was primarily developed to support heterogeneous networks where inter-cell interference is significant because of the networks deployed on same frequency. Cross-scheduling reduces the interference as it protects only one component carrier which is used to allocate resources on other component carriers. In physical layer the signaling information about scheduling on CCs must be provided in downlink. HARQ ACT NAC per component carrier must be delivered in uplink and downlink.
To specify different carrier aggregation combinations, some new definitions are defined in 3GPP. First is Aggregated Transmission Bandwidth Configuration or ATBC. ATBC is defined as the total number of aggregated physical resource blocks or PRB. Second is Carrier Aggregation Bandwidth Class. CA Bandwidth Class indicates a combination of maximum ATBC and maximum number of component carriers. In Release 10 and Release 11, three classes are defined namely Class A, Class B and Class C, depending on the number of ATBC and component carrier. And the third is Carrier Aggregation Configuration. It indicates a combination of AUTRA operating band and CA bandwidth class. For example, the configuration CA underscore 1C indicates intra-band contiguous carrier aggregation on AUTRA operating band 1 and carrier aggregation bandwidth class C. Carrier aggregation configurations are defined in release 11 which is modified with later releases in 3GPP. In this table, we have summarized different carrier aggregation bandwidth classes. Here, NRB, A, G, G denotes the number of component carriers supported and their aggregated transmission bandwidth corresponding to number of aggregated resource block. Carrier aggregation enhancement in different 3GPP releases. LTE carrier aggregation was introduced in release 10 as a tool for increasing the overall transmission bandwidth and, consequently, the achievable data rates. Release 10 carrier aggregation supported aggregation of up to 5 component carriers. In release 13 carrier aggregation supported component carrier was extended up to 32 component carriers. Licensed assisted access LA, was introduced in release 13, providing the possibility for LTE transmissions in unlicensed spectrum. The 3GPP release 14 work item performance enhancements for high-speed scenario in LTE improved the mobility and throughput performance under high speed up to and above 350 km h by enhancing the requirements for UE radio resource management RRM, UE demodulation, and base station Prach demodulation. Release 14 only considered the non-carrier aggregation CA, scenario. Release 14 LTE MBMS that is Multimedia Broadcast Multicast Services meets the 5G requirements for dedicated broadcast. Release 15 New Radio supports AUTRAN, New Radio Dual Connectivity, ETC. Release 15 Enhanced V2X by introducing features such as carrier aggregation on the Sidelink interface, 64QAM, reduced latency, and a feasibility study on transmission diversity and short T for the Sidelink. Release 16 considered LTE-based 5G terrestrial broadcast with the objective to define additional numerologies for the physical multicast channel. Release 16 considers additional mechanism to enhance the performance of dual connectivity and CA. In addition, Release 16 enhances the base architecture of Release 15 with features like enhancing the service-based architecture, improving flexible deployments of session management control function and user plane function, support for commercial services using location-based service architecture, enhancements to UE capability signaling, RAN self-organizing networks, dual connectivity and carrier aggregation enhancements. Summarizing the advantages of carrier aggregation, some main advantages are Increased user data rates. Reduced latency. Increased capacity. Club fragmented bandwidths resulting in greater bandwidth utilization. Cross-component carrier scheduling. Effective utilization of radio resources as control channel at one component can be used to allocate resources at another carrier. The real benefit of combining is to provide an efficient way to utilize the available capacity. Aggregating multiple carriers together enables improved efficiency so that more people can be served. However, carrier aggregation operation requires more receiver activity and processing, therefore, the power consumption is higher. Similar to LTE, multiple new radio carriers can be aggregated and transmitted in parallel to or from the same device resulting in efficient radio resource allocation and management. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned for more videos.